Okay, so there's one last thing we need to talk about with diff and diff um, before we finish, and that is the assumptions that, that go into um, figuring out treatment and control groups. Um, it's tricky to find really comparable treatment and control groups in diff and diff situations um, because you have to tell a very plausible story about why it works. Um, in the New Jersey and Pennsylvania minimum wage example, um, it works because Eastern Pennsylvania, they looked just at the stores that are right next to New Jersey, and so they argued that it's roughly about the same type of place. Um, had they said, we're going to compare New Jersey with Montana, you would probably read that paper and be like, who cares? Like, that's not even a comparable control group. Montana looks wildly different than New Jersey, and they have wildly different economic trends in their state, and so um, you can't really compare those two. Um, so generally you don't want to do that if you're looking at like the south you're going to compare um, maybe mississippi and alabama because they're neighboring states they're very similar um, economic wise and they have similar histories and so you can arguably make a case for why they're a good treatment group and a control group um, if you were going to compare mississippi with illinois that's going to be a weird comparison it's going to be a huge stretch and probably not very good for for making that treatment control um, comparison so it's tricky to do this. Um, specifically, mathematically and graphically, there's this, there's this assumption you have to make of parallel trends, which is this assumption that the treatment and control groups, even if they have different values of like starting values of whatever outcome you have, you have to assume that they're both going to move in the same direction. Um, and so that's kind of going back to this idea of um, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Um, you would have to assume that because they're very similar states, they're right next to each other, um, that in the absence of raising the minimum wage in New Jersey, they probably would have followed the same path as Pennsylvania and gone the same way. But they were up a little bit more because of the policy change. So you have to be able to make this parallel trend assumption. That's why that's kind of the mathy reason of why you can't compare New Jersey with Montana. Um, because Montana has its own trends in economics and in wages and in um, fast food hiring practices that will be completely different from whatever is going on in New Jersey. So you can't really make that comparison. Graphically, you can actually check this, especially if you have data bef like for many periods before the intervention. Um, so with the New Jersey, Pennsylvania example, we've been just looking at kind of this region right here that's all we've seen is bef a year before, a year after. You can't really tell any trends there. Um, but if you can get extra data to look at months before and months after, this is a good situation of where you have parallel trends. You have state A, it's whatever this income here is, whatever thing we're measuring here, they have lower income than state B. That's fine. They don't have to have exact incomes for treatment and control. What's important here is that they're both moving at the same rate. So they're just chugging along here over time. And had this intervention not happened right here in the middle of month, or between month three and month four, we can plausibly say that state B would have just kept going up like this and would have ended up at this situation. Um, and if you can tell a convincing story or have statistics to back up the story that this is what would have happened, they were following parallel trends or going up and that's fine, then this red area right here, that is your difference in difference estimation. That is the interaction term coefficient. That's the delta. That is the causal effect that we care about. And you have a plausible causal effect as long as you can say this is what would have happened in a counterfactual world where this policy didn't actually get implemented. And having parallel trends kind of gives you a lot more credibility to say this is what would have happened um, because they were doing it for months before they were following each other and then they split. Um, so with the Pokemon Go example that we saw in the, in the previous section, um, you had good parallel trends for both players and non-players. It was pretty flat. They were even at the same levels. They were following the same trends, and then one group shot up. Um, and it only shot up because of the installation of Pokemon Go, not for any other reason. And so you can make a plausible argument that it only happened because of that, and so that's the causal effect. If you don't have parallel trends, any causal effect you find, you can still calculate that difference there, but it's not going to be accurate and it's not going to be very credible. Um, so for instance, you might have a situation like this, um, where you have state B, here's their trend, they're pretty flat. And then something happened to make them increase and then they're going up. Um, 
So if you follow the, the trend here, what would have happened in the absence of, of the program is it would have been flat here, which means your causal effect here is massive. Um, it looks like this program boosted incomes. This is like $600. That's like $1,200. It like doubled people's incomes because of this, this program, um, which neat. That's what the coefficient would show you. But that's not plausible because these two states are not comparable. State A, even though it's lower, it's been growing and growing and growing. State B was stagnant. And so something happened. Maybe the policy had some sort of some sort of causal effect. Um, it looks like it, it kicked the, the state into something. Um, but you can't use state A as the comparison group because um, they're on a different trajectory and they don't behave at all like state B here. So if you want to make a better comparison, if your data looks like this, you need to find some other state that was flat for months before and then either changed or didn't change after the policy here. Um, the tricky part about this, though, again, is if we were thinking about New Jersey and Pennsylvania, again, all we were looking at were these four points here in this box here. We have no way of knowing month, like years before the, the change in minimum wage. If we imagine state B here is New Jersey, um, maybe they were flat with their restaurant hirings and maybe Pennsylvania was going down um, if we don't have enough data to be able to compare those pre-treatment um, trends it's going to be really hard to argue for parallel trends. And so it's a good idea to get as much pre-data as possible so you can see if your treatment groups and control groups are working kind of similarly. Um, another example here, this is instead of being flat, you have state B, um, income is decreasing, state A, income is increasing. Then the policy happens and state B magically reverses and goes up. If you look at this causal effect, that is massive. Um, if you ran a regression, you would see that this would be the, the coefficient for your diff or for your uh, interaction term. Um, that's great, but it is wrong because again, these are not good comparable treatment and control groups. Um, if you wanted a good comparable treatment or control group, you would need to find a state A that was also declining at the same rate as state B as your control group. Um, as it stands here, that's not good. Um, so how do you know if there is a, any effect that might be messing up your causal effect because of parallel trends issues? Um, so as you saw in your readings, kind of one easy way to do this is to pretend that the treatment happened earlier. And if there's a diff and diff effect that you measure be, like two years before the treatment happens or two months before the treatment happens, then there's probably different trends. Um, and it's not any changes you see between the two states or between treatment and control is probably not because of the policy. So for instance, here's the flat example. So the actual policy happened here in between three and four. So if we just pretend that the treatment happened back here at month two, um, what we can do is then calculate the diff and diff estimate just looking at month one, months one through three here. And um, we would say that orange is going like this, and then they would have kept going up in parallel with state A, which would, or yeah, with state A. So that would put them here. And so there's a causal effect of this fake policy that actually didn't happen at that time. And so the fact that we see this causal effect means um, that that's not actually because of the program. It's just, it just happened naturally. Um, so we can't, like, this violates the parallel trends idea because um, we see a fake causal effect with the fake program when we shouldn't be seeing any causal effect. Um, same thing works if you do the other example here with the downward sloping income. Um, if we then say at month two, it should have kept going up because that's what state A was doing. There's our diff and diff estimate. That shouldn't be there. There should be no causal effect um, from the program because it hasn't even happened yet. This is our fake program at month two instead of at month three and a half here. Um, and so if that's the case, we don't have parallel trends. Um, if you do have actual parallel trends, this is what it would look like. We're gonna shift our um, treatment from month three and a half back to month two. Um, and so they're moving in parallel. And then this is what would have happened at the end of month or at month three. Um, notice how there's no red line here. There's still this dotted line. This is the hypothetical endpoint. Um, and notice how there's no causal effect. 
that's because these are perfectly parallel. There's no weird effects that are happening just because of state differences. These are good treatment and control groups because they're perfectly parallel in the months preceding the actual implementation of the program there. Um, so that's one way to check. Um, and then the example for this session, um, in the R code, I have example code. And in your problem set, you'll also have an example of how you actually shift this treatment back um, to a different time period to see if there's an effect. And so you'll get practice with that. Um, one more assumption or one thing that can go wrong with your diff and diff estimates um, is the timing of them. Because often you will work with um, units that have different timings. So right now we've been we've been talking about the New Jersey and Pennsylvania example throughout all of these sections. Um, and we've been looking at one specific window. So right around 1992, where New Jersey raised its minimum wage, Pennsylvania didn't. And so we were able to get that causal effect. Um, but that assumes that those states never actually change their policies ever again. But maybe Pennsylvania changes their state minimum wage like 10 years later and New Jersey doesn't. Now you can do another diff and diff for that section. And then maybe five years later, New Jersey changes and Pennsylvania doesn't. And now there's another diff and diff you can look at. Um, and so often you get units that get treatment at different times. And this differential timing can actually mess up your estimates depending on where you're looking. So if you look at this example here with this fake income example, um, you have early adopters. So this is our, our like at month four and a half here. Um, this this line here it goes or self-selects into the treatment, does some sort of policy change, implements some sort of program, whatever. Here is our outcome. And so this is what we were looking at in the slides before. Um, basically this section here, and we were saying that that's our causal effect, the difference between the solid line and the dotted line here, um, or this distance right here. And we were happy, yay, there's a causal effect. There are parallel trends, that's great. Um, but if we then, this late group, so maybe this is Pennsylvania years later, they raise their minimum wage and New Jersey doesn't, um, then there's going to be a different causal effect here. And it's actually going to make it look worse for New Jersey. Um, so if we look here at both of these things simultaneously, so if we look in the first half of this year, these first six months, there's a positive effect of this program for the early group. There's that, that positive difference right there. Um, if instead we look at this next policy change as the latecomers are starting to adopt, there's actually a negative effect for the early group. It looks like um, the treatment is reducing their positive effect that they had earlier because the latecomers are now getting that positive effect and it's kind of erasing the positive effect that came from um, New Jersey or the first group that, that implemented the policy change. And so how do you know which one of these lines you're looking at when you're doing a diff and diff? You don't. You're always going to be looking at one of these, like the New Jersey, Pennsylvania example we've been using is here, but it could also be here. It could also be later. It could also be way later or way earlier because they constantly change their policies at different times. Um, so that's going to distort your findings. Um, there are mathy ways and graphical ways of figuring this out and figuring out how much um, bias comes into your results because of differential timing. We're not going to cover it in this class because this is actually fairly like new. Um, this was discovered by this economist here, Andrew Goodman Bacon. Um, he wrote this paper here. He calls it Bacon Decomposition here, um, where like the latest version of this paper is 2019. It's all very new stuff here. Um, there are ways of adjusting for that. Um, and this paper goes into the super mathy details of that. Um, the R package has documentation showing how to do it. Um, we're not covering it in this class. Just know it exists. Um, if you're really interested in this stuff, check it out, read his paper. Um, if you press the P button here, you can see the presenter view. There's a link to his paper there. Um, it's super mathy. I, it, it's hard to read because it has to be super mathy because it's a stats paper. Um, but in a few years, there will be a lot more kind of applied papers that, that show how this um, changes people's estimates of diff and diff. Um, causal effects because of this differential timing stuff. So if you use this bacon decomposition package, it'll let you decompose your causal effects into 
um, kind of different time periods and how much and see how much distortion there comes from different time periods. So check that out. Check that out if you're interested. The main thing we're caring about in this class is the parallel trends assumption because that's the main way of thinking about whether or not you have comparable treatment and control groups. Um, so that's the main thing you need to remember. Just also remember that differential timing is a problem and people are still trying to figure out how to get around that problem.